Hello, today is October 9th, 2014. We're meeting today with Mr. Wallace Lavery at his home in Greeley, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Wally, and thanks for sitting down today to, to tell your story. Thank you much for coming. I appreciate it very much. Oh, you betcha. Well, let's start out, if we could, tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you're born, a little bit about your family. Uh, I was born in uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, on uh, February the 9th, 1947, and uh, we lived um, in different parts of uh, Washington State. That's I was uh, real young going to Washington State. My dad uh, was traveling because he was in the military. Okay. And so uh, he traveled uh, and uh, eventually down by the Columbia River uh, between uh, Oregon and Washington. We lived in two or three different little towns there. Eventually we went to uh, a town called Alderwood Manor. And uh, that's where I was raised. Went to school there, and, and uh, we, uh, while Dad was gone, Mom was the boss at the house, and uh, uh, she had uh, a big garden every year and stuff like that. Um, so you didn't move with him as he had different assignments? Or? We did later on. Okay. Uh, later on... Um, we had, uh, at home, we had three quarters of an acre, it was all on lawn, and guess who had uh, all <laughs> that thing? <laughs> but anyhow, it, uh, it was okay. Uh, the high school was a lot of fun. Um, I chased, <laughs> I didn't do very good in school. Uh oh I chased too many ladies. <laughs> and so, Oh, I graduated and by the skin of my butt, but you know, <laughs> I had a good time and everything else, and uh, uh, it was a lot of a lot of fun. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. After school, I went to work for uh, Boeing Aircraft Company for oh, I guess about nine months, and we just uh, had to learn. I had to learn how to do things there from a uh, punch press to whatever, and um, uh, it was making good money at that time, you know, because of, uh, they asked, asked me if I wanted to uh, work Saturdays and Sundays. I worked three, week, three weeks straight in a row, Saturdays and Sundays, took a weekend off once a month, hmm. and all the money that I got, uh, I gave to mom. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I gave it to mom to put in the bank, or she needed groceries, needed something. Dad was sending money, naturally, but, you know, how military is, they, right. once a month, well, I didn't care. It mm. came back, it came back later on in uh, my life that it, uh, it helped him. Mm. Right. So. Now, were you an only child? I'm the only child. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I had, I guess, what mom told me. I had a sister, but she died at childbirth. Oh, okay. And um, we uh, moved around uh, after Dad. Uh, he was down in San Francisco, and uh, Uncle Sam decided that he was going to uh, move the whole family to Hawaii. Oh. So we spent a couple years there and just enjoyed it. Uh, of course, naturally, the... Uh, the Hawaiians didn't like me. They called me Howley. And, uh, you know, I got in a lot of fist fights and, and everything else. But turned around that uh, uh, one of the guys that uh, I was fighting every day with, we went out and uh, did some diving together and stuff like that. I cut my uh, foot on some coral. He drug my butt all the way back in and uh, got my mom and dad and uh, took me to the hospital. Then later on, I don't know, six months, seven months later on, we went diving again, and um, it was my turn. And he got uh, he had like a, a a lobster in his hand or something like that, and he was coming back up. Uh, more of a yield wanted it more Ooh. than, Ooh. and it just shredded his hand like crazy, and uh, 
was my turn to help him. And so after that, uh, they basically left us alone. Um, we lived on the beach. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, you walk 20 feet, and that's where the ocean is. It's right on the beach side for $50 a month. Now, I, you can't touch it for 5000 I don't think. Yeah. But um, we uh, lived there and uh, uh, went to school in, in there and stuff like that. Uh, they treated uh, Mom very well. They went to uh, where we lived at. We went across the road. We didn't know at the time uh, this big uh, Hawaiian lady, and um, she took Mom in a Jeep and went back into an abandoned plantation where you can get all the bananas you want, papayas, everything. And so, also there's a lake back there. And the kids, and I'm one of them, we got in there and uh, put a big tire on one of them, and there you go. Oh, Ooh. nice. And then um, uh, later on, uh, I had a hurricane or a uh, typhoon come in and uh, wiped out the house pretty much. We found a boat inside our house. It was about a 12-foot boat, and you know it was pretty well damaged the house and everything but um, the guy that owned it owned the house he came and fixed it and we stayed there uh, most of the time uh, 19 55 I think it is 55 56 uh, dad was going to be transferred uh, to India and uh, we were supposed to go mm. uh, at that time there was so much unrest that, uh, what's, who, who was it that, one of the top leaders, he, he died. I don't know if he was assassinated or whatever, and there was too much unrest, and so they said, no, we're not going there. We'll send you back to uh, San Francisco. And then we went back to Washington. Okay. But, yeah. uh, uh, back in the early 60s, uh, I, Got out of school and um, went to work for Boeing. Then I got a letter. Welcome. Well, it was for the Army. And uh, I said, ain't no way. Now, what branch was your father in? Navy. Navy, okay. And so I went down and uh, signed up for the Navy as soon as I could. Uh, I wanted to be like my dad and what he did. He was a, ma a Master Chief Bozeman, E-9. And uh, after all that, and uh, he uh, he says, I don't care. It, you're, it's your it's your thing. You've got to go in and uh, see the my great grandfather was in. My dad was in. I was in. My son was in. And uh, I don't know if my other grandchildren when this time gonna go in or not. But um, yeah, let's see what are they? So, what what year did you get your draft notice then? 1960, uh, 64. 65. 60, 65. 65. So, had Vietnam started to fire up yet, or oh, was yeah. it just in yeah. Vietnam has already fired up very well. Okay. Um, I uh, uh, went to San Diego for my boot camp, and. They, Uncle Sam screwed up. They had my boot camp. I had to go to Treasure Island for a month to get my orders. At that time, they were sending uh, military guys to, to uh, Treasure Island uh, to wait for their orders instead of right after boot camp. Um, I didn't care. You know, I had a pretty soft job there, uh, painting rocks. <laughs> And uh, so we, um, uh, so I went in and got my orders. I uh, got my orders uh, for Seattle, Washington. They sent me back home. Huh. And that was a shock. I was on a DE, destroyer escort. 
small one. And that was uh, a Bozomate thing, a decan, decade, what they call them. And uh, so I, uh, I started liking it to a certain extent. And then uh, I got orders after about six months there up in Washington. I was going home every night that I didn't have liberty or didn't have uh, duty. Mm -hmm. So, hey, why sleep on the ship when I sleep in my own bed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we, so I um, went ahead and uh, got my orders uh, for U.S. Canberra, uh, CA-70 or CAG-2. It's, na it's named after HMS Canberra that was sunk during World War II. And it was uh, a big ship. And heavy cruiser. It was a heavy cruiser, yes. And it uh, had 8-inch, 3-inch, 5-inch uh, guided missiles. And um, when we only shot maybe one or two guided missiles at a, at a drone to see if they were working. And they weren't working with AM. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 And so uh, in 65, after all this, we uh, got orders to go to Vietnam. And uh, I decided uh, I didn't like the deck apes. So uh, one day, one of the the guys from the signal bridge hollered down they needed some more people and uh, for communications and stuff like that. And I said, hey, I'm out fresh air and everything else. I said, hey, I could do this. So I signed up with them and put a cheat sheet in to see if I can transfer over there and stuff like that. I transferred and uh, I learned a lot, but it was as easy as you think it would be. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you have to learn Morse code. Uh, the flags, different flags that they put up, and each one is a little different. And it tells you if you're going to be turning right, left, uh, or fire, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And semaphore, that's the one with your hands. And you can send messages that way, too. Um, they have a, uh, a big light, way big light up uh, on the third level. Uh, you can see that for about 20 miles or something like that. Huge. But uh, it, uh, then we were, we went to the stop, we stopped off in Hawaii. Uh, we stayed, uh, what was it, a week there or two weeks, something like that for get uh, supplies and stuff like that. And actually you had, uh, um, what, do you, what do you call it? Uh, oh, I had leave for a couple days and uh, I tried to go back to find the, the house and everything else. Couldn't do it, they, they tore it down and mm -hmm. everything. And I can understand that, but uh, it was, after a while, I, it got to be too much um, too much money for whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. So I uh, went ahead and uh, gave my chit to uh, one of the guys that uh, that's never been there. So he went off, and I stayed on board, did uh, my duty there, and we took off. We went to Guam next, and we um, picking uh, picking up stuff there. And uh, picking up people, there wasn't Guam ain't much there. I just stayed on board. There's no sense. And then we went to uh, the Philippines and uh, picked up more ammo. And uh, no, no, we didn't pick up ammo there. No, I would pick up stores and you know stuff like that there. You know, always had a line, and you got yourself in that line because you were told to. And, but things like this good steak disappeared. <laughs> I know that for a fact. <laughs> but anyhow, um, we uh, stayed there for two weeks in, uh, in the Philippines and uh, did some R&R &R things there and uh, had a few too much to drink and 
and stuff like that. So what can I say? <laughs> uh, then we went to Vietnam. Uh, the first uh, first one that uh, first tour, I guess you want to call it. Uh, the captain, we had uh, a captain that uh, was damn right straight uh, forward, and he says we're going to do six, uh, thirty-six thousand rounds. The first tour there. My God, we did thirty-six. We did thirty-seven thousand rounds okay. of eight-inch, and we got. Uh, after we run low on all the um, ammo, we had to go out and get stores and get more ammo. And uh, well, since I was a signalman, a skivvy waiver, what they called us, um, I didn't have to go down there. I had to stand watch. Now, would that be your general quarters as well? Yes. Okay. Yes, general quarters, yes. And so... We brought all that, took uh, a day and a half or something like that, at night and a day. But uh, it was, you know, a lot of work for a lot of people and everything else. Now, when you'd be, when you would do these shellings, how far off the coast would you guys be? I mean, what? Uh, we would be approximately maybe a mile and a half off. Really? That close? Were you oh, in between the... Not yet. Mm -mm. And... Um, they would call in CIC and they would uh, um, let the eight inch go. And uh, it was uh, quite an experience the first time I heard those babies. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Because it, um, uh, we were pretty close to the eight inch. And we, we I used to smoke and we used to use the, the ends of it, uh, the filters, stick it in my ears because of the concussion. Wow. Uh, also, when the 5-inch go off, the reason, you could tell when the 5-inch when the is going to go off and the 8-inch, you can hear it click. A very loud click. And then you know damn well what's going to happen next. Just stand back. The shell itself weighs 360 pounds. And it takes two 50 pounds, or is it 100 pounds? I'm not quite sure. Two of those uh, powders to uh, put that uh, bullet wherever you go. Fifteen miles is the most that it'll go, and you can bet your sweet bippy on fifteen miles it's going to be there. Mm -hmm. After fifteen miles, it's a fifty-fifty. Mm -hmm. But the fifteen miles, I would hate to be around it. Um, when did the Russian ship come in? Oh, that's later. Mm. And uh, so... Now, be, being that close to, to the shore, would you ever get a, a fire from shore? From That's later on. I got okay. another story okay. to tell you. Okay. And that one almost got me. Oh, boy. Okay. But anyhow, that uh, uh, after doing that, uh, we went back to uh, Philippines and went back to Vietnam again doing another tour over there. Now, these trips, did that involve crossing the uh, equator? No, nope, not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, so then we uh, went to Hong Kong, spent some time in Hong Kong, about two weeks for R&R. &R. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, got in trouble there. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, we've been out to sea, I guess, about five months, three, four weeks. About five months. Wow. And uh, all we wanted was just uh, get drunk and be Henri. Right. Uh, one of the buddies, he got mad at the stewardess or whatever you want to call him. And uh, lo and behold, uh, she went to talk to this big Chinaman, Chinese man. And I, and I knew damn well we screwed, he screwed up. The next thing you know, there is fists going, tables are going, and most of the time it's us that's getting beat the hell out of. <laughs> and so we heard the whistles from the military, police. We hauled ass out of there, and uh, 
went back to the ship. Well, my nose was over here. I had a black <laughs> eye. And I had a split lip. But, you know, we were at sit we were standing at quarters in the morning, next morning, and uh, uh, our division officer came and uh, what happened, boys? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just having fun. And he turned around and he says, yeah, I can see that. And so next we got uh, Liberty, but we took about, uh, okay, we took six of our guys from the division or the signal bridge and we got took some guys from quartermaster and we get a, a quartermaster and us are basically the same thing to a certain extent we went back in there and we just tore that place apart uh that big chinaman he went into the most glass there was you know how the ladies have their glass or dance in front of the well, that's where he went and uh we did about five grand damage in there. And uh, so we took off like crazy. Back on ship. Uh, well, you know, I still had a black eye and never did straighten my nose, but later on I had to. But anyhow, um, we took off, got board ship and left. Uh, the division officer knew what happened because he, he's no dummy. But... Uh, Nothing was ever said or anything else. And uh, we had a good time. <laughs> if you can call it a good time. <laughs> but anyhow, we went uh, back to Vietnam um, at that time. So this is now be your third tour, correct? No, I'm still on the first. Oh, it's still the first? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we went back there to Vietnam and uh, did our, whatever we had to do and stuff like that. Uh, then we went back to the states. I oh, had, okay, okay. And uh, I got two. I got a month's leave. I guess it was. Went back home, saw mom and dad and everything else. Uh, went back uh, to Sandy, uh, Long Beach. That time. That's where we had a good time. The bunch of us uh, laying on the beach and watching the girls go by and everything else. Well, a friend of mine was. Um, getting a tattoo. He getting a big eagle on his chest. I am a chicken on that. So <laughs> as he's doing that, I'm looking around. And I, and I remember when I was growing up, there was a cartoon called Wally Gator. And he was in the zoo. Him and his buddy was always trying to escape from the zoo. And so I liked that one. So that's why I put that on now the sailor hat now this is supposed to be blue uh -huh. this is supposed to be blue well I had it turned brown like he's stepping in stepping in chick okay <laughs> <laughs> and so so that's my nickname Gator and uh, after that uh, everybody called me Gator hmm and uh, so we went back over on the second tour. Uh, Naturally, we had a, we stopped in um, Hawaii and all the other ones. The same thing. We got back over there in '66. Uh, and so in '66, we had um, a couple things go kind of haywire. Uh, I firmly believe uh, that we were still shooting. They changed uh, captains and stuff like that. And uh, he was downright say, hey, this is the way it's going to be. And so uh, we just uh, went back there and uh, done some shooting and stuff like that. Um, it wasn't really that much going on as far as the ship. Now, the third third one we went to, that was something else. Okay. Um, first of all, um, we were we were in a storm and um, 
I'm not sure if it was a hurricane or a typhoon. You're talking the second tour still, or are you down on, the th on the third? I'm on the third. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Yeah. Um, we were in a storm, and uh, this gentleman that, uh, I can't think of his name. Oh, I can't think of his name right That's now. Okay. Anyhow, he um, he was kind of a loner, and so we we're in that storm, and uh, uh, we got out of this. We were in the storm, and then uh, later on, everything quieted down. I never got seasick, hmm. and uh, I'm sitting at the table. The tray's going this way and this way. I'm just eating, having a good old time here. A lot of these guys on the other side here. Wolf. <laughs> they didn't like that too well. But anyhow, on the third tour, third tour, uh, we were shelling North Vietnam. And so when they started doing that, naturally the captain tells everybody, stay off the main deck. Go through the ship to get to where you have to go. That's only common sense, you know. Well, according to the reports, that um, this gentleman, this guy, went out on the main deck by the eight in, by the eight-inch guns. When it fired, the concussion blew him overboard, and uh, Higby. Yeah, Higby. No, it's not Higby, is it? I can't think the name right now. Oh, I'm sorry. But anyhow, he got blown overboard. And it's a wonder he didn't get uh, chopped up by the screws. Mm -hmm. And so we, um, we came to quarters the next morning, and uh, he wasn't around. So by uh, maritime law, or Navy's law, one of the two, you got to search for him for three days. That's what I believe is three days. Anyhow, we search and search and search. Come to find out uh, down the road uh, that uh, he was picked up by a, a sampan, uh, some fishermen, and uh, then he was handed over to the VC mm. for Hanoi Hilton. Oh boy. Bird dog. Yeah. Bird dog. Anyhow, he um, spent time there. I have, now it's been almost 40 years or longer. I have a hard time believing that. I'm going to be honest with you. The reason why is I was there. And so were a lot of the other. Now, who in their right mind would, especially with the captain says, stay off the main deck. Why would you want to go on yeah. the main deck? Yeah. Next to the guns. Yeah. So that's, if I'm right, that's okay. If I'm wrong, well, you know, there's not, nothing I can do and I won't do. Yeah. But this is one of the stories that that I went with. The fan tale. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, on the third trip, Third trip uh, after we got done, uh, we went down, went past the equator. Okay. And uh, I was a polywalk. Okay. <laughs> and um, we, or they, uh, got us pretty good. Uh -huh. Now, my first class was the devil. And he had the devil suit on. And also, he had a piece of wood, and on the, each end was a battery. Two batteries, one on each end. And, uh, well, naturally, you're gonna, they're going to soak you down to salt water and everything. You get zapped, and it takes the hair off. <laughs> so they did that several times to different people. Got me a couple times. And then you have to crawl all the way from the, fan, uh, the front of the ship all the way to the back. And so we did that, and we um, had to get bathed in some oil and stuff like that. Then we had to kiss the, kiss the belly. And uh, he had eggs, eggs all over it. He had uh, 
King Neptune's yeah. belly was nasty. <laughs> nasty when he grabbed you, he grabbed you by your ears and just... <laughs> and so then you get dumped again. And uh, the last part is even grosser. It's a uh, canvas that you uh, hook together and uh, they, um, you have to crawl through it. They save the garbage yeah. for several days. Are you a shellback? No, I've just heard so many stories. Yeah. Well, we, and when you crawl through, there guys have puked in there and everything else, so it's quite nasty. <laughs> and so that was a, a, a shellback, and I am one. Uh, my son's not, but uh, it don't matter. It, it's just something. Yeah. We got to Melbourne, Australia, and it was like uh, unbelievable. We went on board. They they had dignitaries come aboard, naturally, and everything else. When we got tied up, there was ten thousand people waiting for us. Huh. Okay, HMS Canberra was uh, sunk during World War Two, and we were named after that Canberra and so when we got to uh, um, Melbourne it was like uh, party all over again and uh, we um, had people when it was your turn like for duty or whatever and uh, we um, they, as you come down the gangplank they would Grab you. You're coming home for dinner with us. Is that right? Uh, oh, yeah. I couldn't buy a beer. I couldn't buy a taxi. I couldn't buy anything. Train, whatever. Everything was free for uh, us. And naturally, we had to sample the beer there. <laughs> yeah, sampling the beer, we really uh, sampled it all <laughs> right. Didn't know our, our butt from a hole in the ground <laughs> after that. But anyhow, we um, uh, stayed there for about two weeks, had a good time. And uh, the family that got a hold of me was, I guess, the, I guess you would call it kind of rich. And they had daughters. And, um, <laughs> but then, yeah, they had a house back in the uh, sticks, a beautiful house. I don't know what he did or anything like that. Never did ask him. You know, you can see the kangaroos just jumping around mm -hmm. and all different other things like that. And I really enjoyed it. Also, I enjoyed chasing the cows too. <laughs> but anyhow, Duh. from there, from uh, uh, there, from Australia, we took off, went back, went back home. On number four, four tour, that one was a hairy one. Uh, Is that when you went to Japan? No, that's the one. Well, I, I hit Japan a lot of times, too. Uh, on, the, on the fourth one, we were um, over in Vietnam, and we got orders to go to Korea. Hmm. Um, there was a couple of ships. What was an aircraft carrier, us, and I think two destroyers. Uh, where the Pueblo was taken, I guess there was some type of bullshit going on, and they wanted uh, the U.S. to be on the outside on this ship in case something goes on. So we spent there. We went from 120 degree heat to uh, snowing. I got sick, and several other guys got sick, too. And then we went back to up north, where we weren't supposed to be. And uh, we, um, I got, uh, in, in 1968, 69, I got, uh, I was on PPRs for about a year. And uh, that was, some of the damnedest duty I've ever seen mm. in my life. In what sense? In what way? Amount of 
what you're looking for, or, uh, or they're looking for you. Email of death. What, hon? Email of death. Yeah, email of death. There. Hmm. I'll give you an example. In they, um, we were went up river. We got a call saying that this um, village was captured by the VC. And so we went up that way and um, uh, they were captured. Uh, they were old. Uh, they told this little boy, I guess he's about 10, 12 years old, you got to go out, out to us, swim out to us. If not, the whole village, he was going to shoot them. Well, um, <clears throat> he swam out. You can't let him get close. He's wrapped in dynamite. Oh. And uh, come to find out, no, we did have to shoot him. It wasn't much. He wasn't going to get there. Right. Um, they did kill the village. VC killed him anyhow. So. And then you, you pretty much did the village in. Yeah, there was nothing, nothing left. Wow. Um. <clears throat> then I went back to the ship, the main ship, Canberra. Uh, one of the, one of the times there, we. Uh, up north. Uh, we seen two guys by um, the ocean, the front part of it, you know, like by the sand, and they're walking. And we were thinking, oh, it's our boys. I started waving, just having a good time, you know, hollering out to them. I turned around, I was going to tell my buddy. They disappeared. They weren't what I thought they mm -hmm. were. And so they went into the village, this other village, and... Uh, uh, they had a little plane come over to see. And they shot at the plane. That was the first mistake. Um, then they we had uh, interpreters come aboard. And they uh, came and uh, had the village chief and everything else come on board to uh, uh, talk to them. We didn't understand their their uh, language anyhow. I never heard of it. I thought it was just garbage. Yeah. And so then um, um, they came aboard and with their little wagons and everything else. And they uh, went back there and they were, you know, they were telling that uh, their interpreter, there's no VC there. There's no VC whatsoever. And uh, they went back to. Um, their village, and the little plane come over again, and they shot at the little plane. And they called in Puff. You know what that is? Uh, but please explain to the, to the camera. Oh, uh, it's, Puff is like a Gatlin gun in a, in a plane. And I believe they're all tracers, and they just wiped the living hell out of that village. Mm. And, um, uh, then with the eight inch going off at them and the five inch, it just, there was no more of the village. And I guess uh, the chief got killed too, because he was uh, right along with them. Then uh, a couple weeks later, or a couple months later, I think it was, um, we got too close to North Vietnam. Um, they started shelling at us. And you can, okay, imagine this is the ship here, and this side here is, is over here is North Vietnam. This side here is the ocean. I was here, my buddy was here. There's always one on each side. And uh, this right here is all, um, radio and so when where was the signal bridge 
This is the signal bridge right here. Mm. There's a radio shack here. And um, there's the three inch, the five inch, and the eight inch. They started shelling us, and you can see them coming and getting closer and going over us. By that time, I didn't know what the hell to do, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, right. Uh, when it was going over, they had a spotter and trying to get us. And I, to this day, I have no idea. Something told me to get the hell off that site, mm. to go over here, go around the corner where it's just real thick steel. I can, I'm not quite sure if it's the first time or the second time they came. They hit the, the radio and uh, if I had been standing where I was normally standing, I would not be here. Um, the hole is, the hole itself is bigger than this right here, way bigger than this. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, then we took off, and uh, actually, uh, um, out to see to see if uh, uh, if anybody's hurt. Eventually, we were been hit several different times in the. Um, Fantail, where they have the helo that comes in and stuff like that. Is that the same time when you pulled that guy out and it was on fire? Yeah, same time. So he was, he was on fire. There was a gentleman that was in there. And uh, so the ship was hauling ass away from everything. Pardon the expression, but just the way it is. Yeah. And um, there was a guy in there. He was on fire from the electrical and whatever, and I pulled his, pulled him out of there. Oh. Um, and he was all right later on. Mm -hmm. How long did you go out down the river? Oh, about a year. So, so the, that cruiser could go up and down. Uh, was they it, went in, there? in the in the delta there, or where? Yes, was? they can. Uh, the ship was huge. Yeah. They had uh, over a thousand people on it. Oh, jeez. Uh, we went up and uh, we went in the, uh, uh, there was a name of a river. I don't remember the name. We went up the river there with that. We were picking up uh, some of the people. Uh, I don't know if they were uh, dignitaries or just, you know, stuff like that. But I don't think they were dignitaries because not where we were at. Um, Probably. Yeah. Then in uh, the same year, it was um, really a, uh, a long year there. Was that the or year the Tet happened? Tenth? Tet. The Tet Offensive. Yeah, the Tet Offensive. We were there. We were told to uh, shell. And so we did that in the I don't know how that turned out as far as us shelling them, but I guess that was pretty nasty. Um, then on the way home, uh, I think a, a day out or something like that, there was, we were, there was a ship, you could see the ship behind us, and he started coming closer and closer and closer and um, he was like this is Ken Baron here's the other ship and he wanted to play chicken I guess if you want to call it and he got so close they asked me to look in what they call the big eyes you could see a net's ass with one of those and find out where it was it was a Russian and so I hollered at him. There was a Russian and stuff like that. And, and I went down below, get some chow, and just relax because I'm off duty. Well, the cop, the cop, <laughs> the captain wanted to see me. And so I went up there. I had to get dressed and everything else. And um, I had to go through a certain book that they had with all the different countries and their flags and stuff like that. 
and I had to uh, show him this is what I saw. And he said, uh, are you sure? I says, yes, sir. I says, uh, I'll bet my life on it. Because when they went around, their flag was on the ass end, and uh, it was plain to see that I, uh, I could see that it was a Russian. Hmm. Wow. Then we headed back home, finally. And uh, I got out of the Navy. I wanted to stay in more because my dad, and, right, you know. Right. But they were going, I asked him, I says, hey, send me to Antarctica or wherever you want me to go. I says, I'll stay in. I wasn't a, an E-4 or anything like that. I was just a seaman. But uh, I already had the books and I was sending the stuff in to uh, take a test and everything else. But they were going to send me right back to where I was at. And I told them, kiss my ass. And I, and uh, when the time come, I was gone. Now, how long was your uh, enlistment for? Uh, actually, it was four years, but I got about a year and a half more. Mm. So didn't bother me. I was I was single. I right. didn't have a wife. Right. I didn't have no kids. Basically, you re-upped. Yeah, basically for another year and a half. Right. They thought I was crazier than hell, but you know. We're talking about, uh, went off camera for a little bit. Uh, we were talking about uh, some of the things that I want to leave out. The things I want to leave out are, it's not too graphic. If you were in the military, you would know. Um, it's hard for me to talk about certain things. Um, it's not that I don't want to, I just, I'd rather not. Right. Um, I have PTSD, and uh, uh, it's not fun. Not fun whatsoever. Uh, my wife now, bless her heart, I love her to death. She's have helped me in a lot of different ways. Um, it started when I was talking to a, a friend of mine. I think he was on the same ship that I was on. And uh, a, a word he was saying, like I was saying, uh, came back and brought some old memories back that I uh, forgot. Up to this point, were you you were suppressing everything, or were you? I was suppressing everything. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, it's hard to talk about that. Uh, my wife, she knows what I go through. Uh, I cannot sleep with her. I'll put this on tape and, and I'll tell you why. Uh, during the during when I go to sleep, I'm fighting. I'm fighting like a uh, to get out of something. Right. Or I hear things, um, and I don't and I do not and will not hurt my wife. Uh, I'm asleep. I don't, I'll punch, I'll kick, um, I move all over the bed, and I will hurt her. And so what we've come up, come to is I have to move to another bedroom. It's not that I don't want to sleep with my wife. I, I cannot afford to hurt her, right. and I will. There's some nights uh, my wife has found me walking around the house here, looking outside and hearing things with, that's not there. And I've gone to the VA. I see a psychiatrist. I see doctors. 
I had to uh, go to Cheyenne a couple times to see uh, uh, psychiatrists and that way it helps. Um, I've gone to the VA here in Greeley. I've been in a uh, bunch of people together. We talk about support different support group. Yeah, support group. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Um, I recommend anybody that's been through what we've been through um, go get some go get some help because it's it's hell holding it back. Then when you do come out of it, um, when you get some help, you can feel like you're back home or whatever. After I got home from Vietnam, uh, got off the ship, was headed for the uh, airport, and uh, got on the plane and went to Washington. There they had a bunch of demonstrators. I was going to say, was there any issues with, with that? Oh, yeah, boy. there was. Oh. <clears throat> and uh, I was still in the uniform. I won't take it. I won't take it off until I'm home. Guy come up and spit on me. Well, that didn't work out worth a damn for him because I decked him. And I think uh, I broke his jaw, but I didn't care. And I'm, I guess I was pretty lucky because uh, there was a, a police officer there. And he said, I didn't see anything. I said, You can take me now. I said, Something. He says, I didn't see a damn thing. Hmm. And so I went back home and uh, got out of the military, got my papers and everything else, and I started my life. Uh, I went to school on the GI Bill. Uh, I went to school for welding and uh, passed all their tests after about a year and a half. And then uh, I was married to my first wife, and uh, we moved to Colorado here. Uh, my brother-in-law at the time, he was working at Rocky Flats. And uh, I needed a little bit more uh, experience in welding, so I went to work for another company. A couple years later, I put in again, and I got hired. At Rocky Flats? At Rocky Flats. Okay. Um, took a test for him. I didn't do very well. I was so nervous because I wanted the, I wanted the job so bad. At that time, I was making, when I joined Rocky Flats, I'm making five dollars and forty-six cents an hour, and I thought I was in heaven. <laughs> so I worked with them, and. Um, we, uh, I worked uh, on a EB welder. It's electric bombardment. 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 Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, it's quite big the, the thing, and and uh, what it turned out to be was part of a nuclear weapon. Mm. The trigger. Uh, we were welding up uh, plutonium, uranium, and all kinds of other good stuff. And I got tired of doing that after a while. And I got laid off back in 75. I got laid off for about eight months. And uh, I um, uh, went to work for Rocky Flats again. But they had another group. It was uh, called, pardon me, the Mod Center. Modification Mechanic were actually what it's. You're a welder, painter, electrician. Well, well electricians, they, they had their own thing. They knew what the hell was going on. I wouldn't know. And um, 
what they were doing is stripping out rail cars and uh, fixing them up with armor plate on the floor of it, on the sides of it, on the top of it. And they had three lids, and each lid is three tons. And there's armor plate on top. It has to be done by a crane to pick them up. And so, you know, you, you weld in there and take things apart and whatever. Uh, they did tractor trailers, uh, just like you see an 18-wheeler. And uh, except it's all uh, got armor plate inside. Mm. They have certain things in there that uh, you, uh, like a terrorist tries to get in there or something like that, they'll never make it. If they do, they're dead. And there's certain things in there that does that. And just like the rail cars, they try to get in there, they'll never come out. Mm. That's what there was safeguards was. And so later on, um, it was it was good work. I liked it. And after a while it got to be I don't know, it's too much politics in there. No matter where you work at, the politics is gonna be there. And so then later on I was down in the hot area again. In the hot area, uh, they uh, they watch you like a hawk, but they trust you. You got it. You got to have a security clearance to get through there. You know. Uh, back in the uh, '70s, me and a bunch of other guys were working on a project, and uh, they asked us if we want to go down south, to Nevada, and all through there see what what it looks like when one goes off that was something else wow wow and so when we came back um, they have a little room and it's like a, a um, ship door and uh, there's uh, security right there and security inside while you're working welding up different things. I kind of enjoyed that. Uh, didn't make first couple of times kind of made me nervous, but uh, you know, it. Well, yeah. <laughs> what were they holding? Uh, well, they had a nice big rifle. Hmm. But uh, it, uh, it, and then uh, I went to a cooler a coal building, what they call a coal building. And that way um, I didn't have to monkey with uh, all the plutonium and everything else. Um, I left and they got, uh, they're going to tear it down, which they eventually did. And uh, they, they asked me if I wanted to stay and help tear them down, tear everything down. I tell them there's no damn way I'm going to. Reason why is they're going to tear it down, and uh, they said they're going to have all kinds of uh, uh, equipment for health and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and you know, so they don't get hurt. You know, that didn't work out. Uh, I I knew what they were going because I've been there for 20 years, 20 plus years. I know what's in those drains and everything else. They can't tell me. But anyhow, it, I told them no. In 95 I left and um, I went to, I had to go to work for a while, quite a while. Because I wasn't old enough to retire. <laughs> uh, so I went as far as electrical. I went as an apprentice electrician. Because I wanted to learn something different and different things like that with electricity. Um, my wife now, I met her uh, at Lowell's. It, it was not Lowell's then, it was... Eagle Hardware. E oh, that's right, Eagle Hardware. And uh, I lost my other job and uh, 
I went back there to put my application. Matter of fact, they hired me right on the spot. I didn't have to do a piss test or anything. It was just, I don't care. I ain't going to find nothing on there anyhow. So, and so they hired me, put right, put me right to work next day. And uh, I'm leaving something out, aren't I? Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, when they were, when I was electrician, this goes back a little bit. When I was electrician, uh, they put the, all the, most of the new guys up on top of the ceiling and working up there. Yeah, they put me up there bending pipe. I wasn't that, that good at bending pipe, I'll say that. Well, I'm kind of a, a guy that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My a prankster. Oh, yeah, I'm a prankster. Up above, and these these ladies and everybody else, is just running around trying to get things put together. So they owed me. Well, I seen her, and I seen a few other management and everything else. These little wire nuts. Mm -hmm. I'm way up above, and I'm throwing them right down, looking at them. Funk during it several times. <laughs> and uh, so they knew who I was, so they hired me on the spot. And that time, I, you know, got to meet my wife here and had a good time. Uh, am I leaving anything else? Um, we were, we were together for quite a while, then, and then my mom, I got a telephone call one time, and, uh, she or, uh, she was still working, and I, I told her I had to, uh, go to Arizona to take care of my mom, and I told her I loved her to death and everything else, and I says, I gotta go. And what did I tell you? Just a minute. And I looked at it, and she looked at me. She says, when are we leaving? Mm -hmm. And so I yeah, went down, picked, uh, stayed with mom for a while uh, in Apache Junction, Arizona. And uh, it was quite hot. We didn't care for the heat that well. Uh, mom lived, uh, my wife was a uh, caretaker for her and uh, she passed on she was almost 98 mm. and her grandmother was 105 oh boy so you got some some genes running through you and so and she was definitely a sailor's wife hmm. yeah you know it uh, when we moved in with her just for a little while until we find her place I ain't gonna put her on the camera, what she said, but okay. you can imagine it. <laughs> and I told, I told my wife Donna, I says, she's been a sailor's wife for you know, almost 40 years, so she's up to the language. And so Donna really didn't believe me until I op her and I opened the back of the trailer to. Just take out the bed and something like that. Mom told her, what What are you going to do with all this stuff? <laughs> it was other words, I won't yeah. say. No, it was what the F are you going to do with all this S? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we moved in, stayed with her for a while, and got kind of bad. So we uh, found a house or mobile homes and uh, fixed it up real well for us and uh, that's when uh, Fatso decided to come around Valentine or Cat. But anyhow that's and it came back uh, came back home I started with uh, I was getting uh, um, cancer on my Shoulders, my head, uh, face, face, yes, all, all related to Rocky. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. So he's had several surgeries for cancer. Yeah, there's one over here that goes all the way mm. back through here, and it was taken down to the skull. 
That one was a melanoma. And uh, so I've had several of those. Uh, there's a lot of guys that I know, I did know, they're not here anymore. Spirulosis. Yeah. I get tested about every three years on that. And uh, it's... Thank God you haven't shown up. Yeah, I've never shown up. It's in the, be in the lungs. And so, uh, other than that, we just, uh, I got a, uh, from Rocky Flats, um, I get, I don't know, it's a hex, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You got a settlement. Oh, I got it, pardon me, yeah, I got a settlement. Because they lied and they knew it. Yeah. And it wasn't, a, really, it was a nice chunk, but it wasn't a, um. It wasn't no million dollars. No, it was no million dollars by no means. But it was enough to buy this house straight up, and uh, we had a f few other things that we wanted in here, and so we went down to bought some nice, and we paid good money for it too. This this is the last that we're going to have, so we might as well. We bought really good furniture that's going to last like forever. Yeah, but um, now I'm retired. Oh, I forgot to say, I worked at uh, Walmart for 11 years. And uh, after we, I worked for Walmart down in Arizona, then transferred up here, worked for, for them for the rest of the 11 years, which was about six or seven, something like that. And uh, I retired. Then I retired. And uh, I haven't regretted a bit. Yeah. Uh, now, we um, we do a lot of fishing when we can. Uh, we have a, uh, a thing that we like to do. It's uh, storage wars. Type thing. Type thing. And uh, like we found some antiques. That's, that's what we do for our little extra income. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um... This trip, we found uh, a book about that thick of uh, football players. Hmm. The Broncos, Seahawks, Bills, Rams. And uh, then we found uh, this other batch that we found in today. I, I, a 1987 uh, Constitution uh, coin set. Wow. It's 30 years old. So that's what we do. Yeah. And besides, if I don't want to do anything, here's my chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the cat sit in the chair and take a nap or two. Yeah. But that's just about all yeah. I can think of mm -hmm. to say. Talk, talk a little bit about family. You, t you mentioned a son, uh, grandchildren. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. I don't want to forget them. Um, we have... I have two children. My wife has two children. One has passed away, mm. and uh, she has a daughter that lives in Thornton. Thornton. And uh, I've got a boy and a girl also. Uh, and between us, you've got seven grandchildren. Mm. We got seven grandchildren. Uh, my son works. Uh, in a, computer place or something like that I, and he lives in not too far but he's so busy with his four kids he doesn't have time very much to scratch his ears or whatever and my daughter has two children and uh, they will, they're going to be 18 and what, what is she 12? Yeah. 12 and uh, oh, we get together when we can and mm -hmm. we get them all together uh, so it's it's a big family we have. I I like it. It's not uh, that we have twenty grandchildren, but seven's enough, far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we have fairly good sized family, and we're pretty close knit. So yeah. Okay. 
I just lost my brother. Mm. So, and he was Vietnam. He was a tunnel rat. He was over there the same year I, years I was. Mm -hmm. I never even knew him. Mm. But uh, and he had went up and down the rivers in the PBR boats as well to go into Cambodia where they <clears throat> weren't there. They weren't there, of course. And uh, he was a tunnel rat. Mm. He spent the majority of his. About two and a half years as a tunnel rat. He was not in Vietnam as such very much. But anyhow, um, I got all my, um, uh, I lost all my medals in a fire. Either that or they were stolen, one of the two. And uh, just uh, this week, after 40 years, I finally got them all back. Oh, great. How oh, wonderful. And uh, I'm very happy finally. Um, one of the politicians, see, I tried to go through uh, Uncle, Han Uncle Sam the first time. You know, I tried three times to get my medals. Yeah, you have to call, but they, in Washington, they, are, they got their thumbs stuck some places. <laughs> I'll and so uh, what I had to do is eventually is go to one of the senators and uh, we finally got it okay and uh, that's my wife's gonna make a nice thing for him and stuff like mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and got a shadow box and shadow box uh -huh. and uh, and all the things on the side that's got to be rearranged and everything else that's her job I'm I don't know what she has in planned. I do. Yeah, I figured you did. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow. And you also went on the honor flight this year. And yes. And first time back to the wall. Talk about that experience a little bit. Well, when I, uh, we went to the wall, went to the other places. Um, World War II, the monuments they had there. Then they hit, we went to the, the Korean and that was something there. And then we went to the Air Force, and that was uh, really something too. I, I've never seen that before. Mm -hmm. I thought that was outstanding. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two guys on the wall that I know. And so I found them, and uh, I don't have their names down there or there, I got him here. Uh, yeah. And so I just, I know who they are. And uh, and I cried like a baby. I'll admit that right now. Yeah, I yeah. cried like crazy. And when you touched the wall? Oh, when I touched the wall, I, that was something else. I touched the wall and I felt like somebody was on the other side. Really? Yeah. And that was... He told me it took his breath away. Yeah, it that took that my out? breath away. And there was other people there, naturally, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I felt like somebody on the other side was touching my hand. He said it took his breath away. He's just like... <gasps> yeah. I, I, I don't know how to explain it, to be honest with you. It... Uh, I've touched the wall one other, or I touched the wall when they headed here in uh, Colorado right. at Fort Collins. Right. I took my wife and I brought all the kids mm -hmm. and uh, my grandchildren. I wanted to have them see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were quite, uh, I'm not, what's the word I'm looking for? Not starstruck, just awe and all. Fascinated. Fascinated, yeah. There you go. Thanks, son. Anyhow, um, then uh, they were going to go to dinner. Uh, we went to dinner, and uh, the, everybody, this big family of ours. And uh, I asked them, I says, well, you've seen the wall. Now, my son has seen the wall before. Right. Um, this is to the, my grandchildren. And uh, um, is there anything you want to ask, you want to know about? I'm going to tell you the straight, straight forward scoop. Um, 
I ain't gonna lie to you about it. Mm -hmm. There was a few questions older uh, of the older ones, and uh, and one of uh, Michael, I think it's Michael, Grandpa. Where's your medals? And so I says, well, they're not here. I says, I'll have to get them. That's and that prompted that. Yeah. Okay. He also asked you if you had hurt people. Yeah, he did. He asked me, did I hurt people? And I told him straight up, yes, I did have to hurt people. Yeah. And, uh, and he says, why? Oh, well, that one was kind of a toughie. Because to me, it was tough. Right, right. Um, it's either they're going to hurt you or you're going to hurt them. Right. And that's about the only way I could really yeah. put it that he would understand. So he was a little over eight years old at the time. Yeah. yeah. So you had to put it in terms of right. scaring or making you really shocked, but to where he would get the point. Right, yeah. And um, when uh, we were there, um, uh, I met a bunch of guys there from different countries. Uh, one was from Germany, a bunch of sailors from Germany. I got some pictures of them with me in there. Uh, they're back in D.C. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, then the uh, British. Yeah. And uh, I got some pictures with them, too. And... Uh, uh, they were awesome guys Bo on both up both countries they were really really nice and everything else I sat there and shoot the shoot the bull yeah. for quite a while now did, did, now did you and your dad ever shoot the bull about your experience did you guys ever talk about your experiences uh, no 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 uh my dad did and my mom and dad they got upset with me twice um one time, uh, I wasn't writing letters home too fast. And so my dad, as is, is a, is a ex-military man, he wrote a letter to the captain. And let me tell you about the ass chewing I got. <laughs> and then uh, back uh, later on, uh, there was a thing in the newspaper. Uh, of Seattle's uh, that uh, our ship getting hit and stuff like that. Oh, oh wow! And uh, I didn't tell Dad that. Oh. I didn't tell Mom that. I didn't want them to worry. Right, sure. But that didn't work out worth a damn either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, uh, there was different things, and uh, they were. Uh, I didn't tell them about. I was told to keep my mouth shut for a while about the guy going overboard until we find out where he's at or whatever, the sharks got him or whatever. So we, I didn't say nothing. But naturally, the paper, and I've got the uh, section out with the, what it says, stuff like that. So eventually after when I got home, I had to square things up. And Dad kind of understand when I said I got ahead to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. That's what I was told. Yeah. He says, I can understand that. Your mom wasn't having it. No. <laughs> mom was having no part of that. Yeah, so, anyhow, hmm. I, is there anything else you would? Well, through the years, did you uh, keep in touch with any of your buddies, or did you, was there any sort of like ship reunions or anything like well, that? Well, most of the ship reunions were back east. I uh, put on the... Uh, I had, I don't have, I, one thing that we don't have is a computer. Mm. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that, uh, but anyhow, um, I had my son or my daughter-in-law, or daughter, uh, put in uh, uh, something, you know, see if we can mm -hmm. get a hold of any, anybody. I haven't heard anything. Hmm. Uh, the reunions, there was uh, a reunion, I have a book, but it's, too old, and uh, and uh, he, I uh, haven't heard nothing, mm. but that's okay. I, I the ones that he was buddies with, 
are gone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Friends of mine that that they I knew that they, from they didn't even make it. Yeah. So there, that's from the P, PTs. Yeah. How did you get How did you get transferred to those? I mean, was it part of the ship, or or how did How did you end up in the in the river? Uh, okay. Um, it's there was a bulletin board, and it was full of glass and everything else. And uh, wanted uh, volunteers for PTs. My buddy and I thought that uh, we would uh, put in for it just for shits and grins. Really? Oh. Uh, didn't think you were going to get it. Well, yeah, I didn't think I was going to get it. Well, we both got it. And uh, I had no idea what the hell that was for. Uh, I got a picture of uh, a gentleman coming on board to talk to us about what we were going to do and stuff like that. I've got the, it's in my scrapbook, stuff like that. (laughs) Who the hell would think that, uh, you know, of all the the sailors or the Marines or the army, or whatever, would want it. Yeah. You know, I was not a, a, a what do you call it, uh, third class, second class, or anything. I was just a seaman. So, I, <laughs> look at the draw, I guess, if you want to call it. Oh, look at what that led to. Oh. Yeah. What it that? continues to, to bring out. Yeah, wow. oh, I, I, the stories I've heard. I mean, it, it, to me, it, you guys seem like nothing like a but a uh, shooting gallery at a, at a carnival that, that going up and down the rivers like that. I just well, yeah, I've had finish. I've had several rounds or whatever go past my ears. I, you, you can hear. Them. They had to stop the sand pans and check them mm-hmm. to make sure they weren't carrying ammunition supplies yeah. or VC buried right. in the bottom of the boat. What? Ah, uh, I. Uh, there was something I was gonna tell you too. I forgot what the heck it was. But I don't know. I'm I'm happy uh, where I'm at. Uh, um, I. I hope my health stays very well, and uh, my grandchildren, my son, and my daughter, and. Our other daughter and done in I love them to death. Yeah. yeah. And I hope they understand <clears throat> what went through, what we did, what I did, or what I wasn't I wasn't forced there because of my country. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I'm very much of a uh, eventually flag will be flown out there, POW flag and also the American flag. Mm-hmm. We just haven't had uh, the time of so much going on, taking her to the doctors about every three days. So, you know, it just takes time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would do it again. Really? Yeah. Even though I know the constant cons- consequences. Yes, I would do it again. Even the river uh, boat aspect of yes. it. Yes, really. Yeah. Well, what are your what are your thoughts now that you know, I, then in regards to the war and now that we've had forty years to, to, to process it and, and look it over, what are your thoughts on the Vietnam War? To be quite honest with you, I don't think we should have been there. Yeah. Um, too much politics. We were not allowed to do certain things, bomb uh, North Vietnam and Cambodia and, and stuff like that. And um, our president's too much politics, just like it is now. Yeah. Uh, back over there where they're at, we got too many politics. And, and I'm the first one to tell you, I don't like politics. I don't like politicians. Because I, 
I don't see very many of them. That's fine with me. Um, Stay out for themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they want to shake my hand, they can shake my hand. If they can't, they don't want to. They can kiss my <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. So I just uh, I stay away from. Them. Well, Wally, as, as we uh, kind of start to wind down this interview, is there anything I didn't ask you that you wanted to talk about? Uh, any other stories have kind of floated to the top uh, as we've been sitting here talking that you want to add? And Donna, feel free to jump in with this as well so that ideally we can cover your story as best we can, or do you think by and large we got everything? I believe that we got everything. Um, some of the, the worst stuff I don't want to talk about yeah yeah fair enough and um, uh, the ones that I have told are real I won't uh, deny what I had to do yeah and like when you and I were talking I would do it again hmm. uh, maybe in a different way but I would do it again hmm. uh, my whole family is military that's what you're talking yeah a, a long history of military in your family and uh, I just, I love my country, and I'm not going to uh, see people step on it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. I will fight it. If they call me up again, I will. But I'm 67 years old, and, you know, but I would never, uh, if they did, ever did, which I don't think they ever will, I would say, okie dokie, I'm mm. on my way. But uh, the country's been good to me, gave me an education, even though I was not really smart enough to take it all the way. <laughs> I was chasing too many girls. But this is something that I did when I was a kid. Now this is for all the kids, all the grandkids, and to anybody else that wants that will see this. I love my country, I love my wife, and I will protect her and my country for the rest of my life. Wow. And there ain't no way that's ever gonna change. Yeah. Well, that's a, a wonderful statement to end on. I wanna thank you not only for sitting down to tell your story, but uh, for your service to our country. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is me um, years ago uh, as a Sigdeman. Um, as you can see, you, you can talk to other people uh, from different ships with, uh, uh, with your hand gesture. Each um, hand gesture is a letter. And the one that you see right there is L for Lavery. <laughs> and uh, that's what, uh, uh, then you go L-A-V-E-R-Y, and uh, uh, you can talk to people on the ships, in port, or wherever you're, you might need it. Okay, very good. Uh, this is me uh, years and years ago. Uh, with one of the gals that I knew, uh, this is this is in uh, Manila, and uh, we were just showing around. She was showing me Manila. Mm -hmm. These are my medals that uh, I've got. I got more than I thought I would have. Actually, this is the National Defense Medal. This is the Vietnam medal with four bronze stars. Mm -hmm. This is the Vietnam uh, service medal. This one here, I believe. That's it, Korea. That's Korea. This one here is the Southeast Asia me medal. This one over here. Uh, I believe it's this one or one of the, I don't remember now. 
One of these, I think it's that one there, this one here. For is gallantry. It, for gallantry. And uh, this other one here. Oh, yeah, well, well. What the heck? Uh, Viet uh, Vietnam Unit Citation Medal. I'm sorry. I'm, and so this one here is, is just, uh, I don't even know. I haven't really had much chance to look That's at them. That's a discharge pin. Oh, it's a discharge okay. pin. I'm sorry. Okay. Honorable discharge. Yeah. This is uh, towards the evening, and uh, as you can see, there's a uh, what they call big eyes, and you can see very, very well with it. Uh, you can see a gnat's ass, I guess, if you want to call it. And the other thing is for uh, a blinking light. Uh, use it as Morse code to talk to uh, a ship, or uh, talk to when you're in port. You got a you learn how to read uh, Morse code by light. And uh, it takes a while. It's nothing that you can do right off the bat. Or sometimes yeah. somebody on shore. Yeah. Do you still remember it? Can you still remember much yeah, of it? Yeah, I can still you, remember yeah. the, the Morse code. Uh, I would say three quarters of it. Wow. But it's, you know, after a while. Fades. Yeah, it fades. You don't need it out here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, what you see there is uh, eight inch uh, guns going off uh, and uh, if you could um, see or be look at it at a certain angle you can with the naked eye you could see the uh, the shell going off oh wow um, the range on that is 15 miles uh, after 15 miles it's kind of 50 50 but uh, when it goes off, see this is a two, two gun going off. When you got the three going off at the same time, it is deafening. Uh, you could have a six gun going off. That's on Canberra. There's two turrets of eight inch. In other words, you got two turrets and you got six guns going in one direction if you wanted to, or you could be shooting different direction. Um, it's an awesome thing to see, and uh, it's definitely deafening to your ears. And, and you said all you used was uh, cigarette filters for. Yep. I'll be damned. Yeah. And I, uh, you were talking off camera too that the ship would would uh, shake when. Yeah, it would shake when you get uh, uh, both turrets going off. The shells weighed three hundred and fifty pounds, I believe it was, and it took, I don't know if it was 100 pounds of, um, actually 200 pounds powder. of powder to make one shell go. Wow. It might be 50 pounds, but I believe it was 100 pounds wow. each. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, uh, missiles. Uh, I don't know too much about them. They did fire a couple of them. Um, at drones when they were, uh, I'm not sure where we were at. I don't know if it was in San Diego or outside of San Diego or someplace out there, not too far. And um, they were shooting at the drones to see of how good they were. They didn't do it with the damn. 